Hi, this is Michael Paul, New Orleans Scottish Rite College. I wanted to do a video today about a situation that I've seen uh, occurring more and more the last few years. And uh, to be honest, it's something that I had thought was a byproduct of some of the old uh, effects from the declining membership, uh, fewer members attending lodge, and so forth. But in thinking about it, over, especially over these last few days, I've come to think that maybe that's a good part of it, but there are other factors uh, playing into this situation. And this situation is where you have a um, Mason who really has a double win. It's someone who is not only qualified and talented, but one with a sincere interest in helping out whenever he can. And this can be a new Mason, it could be a Mason who's been away for a number of years, it could be really any Mason who all of a sudden starts doing something. But the catch is that they are perceived by their lodge and those around them as somebody who is valuable to the whole of Masonry. And what you'll start out seeing is this individual doing something, and it can be a leadership position, maybe a ritual position, any, any position at all. But you'll see them doing work and being praised for it. And then all of a sudden, they'll start popping up in other lodges and in other, the York Rite, the Scottish Rite, uh, pendant bodies. And they'll pop up everywhere because people tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, would you come do this for us? And there's a feeling, I imagine, that they want to help. And what happens next is that you see the person everywhere, and then all of a sudden, you see them nowhere. And I kind of think of this as Masonic burnout. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it today. Now, one of the first lessons that we learn in Masonry is the lesson of the 24-inch gauge. And in this lesson, it's really a lesson of time management, how we best use the day and divide up our time to make the most use and most benefit of the hours within the day. And really, this lesson is part of a, a greater lesson of balance. And uh, there's the thought that if you can achieve balance in your life, it benefits you as a human being. And our goal as Masons is to always try and improve ourselves. All of our lessons are designed to step by step by step make subtle and slight improvements in ourselves that over time we can see a marked difference and improvement in ourselves. And one of the goals that we have is trying to seek to find the balance not only within ourselves but in all of our actions. And if we are stepping by step to improve ourselves, a natural uh, occurrence will be that we will help others. And here is where balance comes into play. Uh, if we were to help no one, then that would be out of balance. By the same turn, if we helped every single person that asked for help, that would also put us in out of balance. And the reason would be is you simply cannot do everything for everyone. And it's one of these difficult decisions that you have to make when you're trying to balance a day. One of the other facts of life of masonry is that for every action we take, there's a consequence. And sometimes uh, the consequence is good, and sometimes it's a lot less than what we desired. And even when our intentions are good and noble, there can be consequences that we don't expect and most likely would not like if we became aware of them. And I can give you an example. When I first started in Masonry, I had the opportunity to travel around and I went to Masonic Week a few times and I had, uh, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, some Masons who were very instrumental in giving me instructions on setting me on my path. 
uh, one of the Masons that I met had been a Mason for a number of years. He was much older than myself and he was very well known in the United States. And he was a Mason who was respected not only for the work that he did but also as an educator. And uh, I was very fortunate to get to know him. Well, he passed away in the uh, 1990s and after he passed away, I got to know his son and uh, we became good friends and I, his son was around my age and we used to visit quite often and would talk and I remember talking a lot about his dad and one of the aspects that every one of us has to realize is that how we perceive ourselves may bear no relation to how others perceive us and depending on the relationship you have with an individual you may perceive them differently than other people it's always a, a matter of perception and when I was speaking to him about his dad he would at times answer but there was always a little something different and, and, and confusing that I never quite understood one day he opened up to me and he told me he says you have to understand he says since I've become a Mason, he says, I've come to realize a lot of the things that my dad did, and I respect them. He says, he did a lot to help individual Masons and Masonry as a whole. He says, but for me, that was my dad. He says, I remember him growing up. He says, and in all honesty, he said, he was never there for me. He was never around. He says, every evening of the night of the week, he was gone. He says it was either a lodge meeting or another lodge meeting or one of the appendant bodies, the Scottish Rite, the York Rite, very, uh, visiting with other Masons. But he says he was always gone doing something Masonic. He says, and, and I didn't see him. He says, I had a much older brother. He says, and that was more of my dad. He says, anytime... I needed to go somewhere. He says, it was my brother who took me, not my dad. He says, for the major events in my life, he says, my brother was there, not my dad. He says, so it took a long time to try and understand what the difference was. And I thought about all of this for, for a good while, and I began to realize that this brother was out of balance. And all the good that he did for masonry as a whole, his personal life was very much out of balance because he gave no time whatsoever to his family. He was never home. And there's a balance that we need to seek and, and achieve. And if we're doing something for others, we have to realize that there comes a time when we have to say no and not feel guilty about it. We cannot, there is no way that any one individual could be everywhere that is needed. There's not enough hours of the day, there's not enough days in the week. There are too many things going on and the most effective educators and leaders know to pick and choose where to go and how to go. And it's not a case of, I favor this lodge over this lodge, or I'm not going to do But you have to understand what your personal limits are, and you have to understand that everything that is done, there's a consequence. And if the consequence can be minimal or it could be great, someone who is always out and always doing something in masonry it may be as minimal, and I say minimal, it's not really minimal, but the least effect may be a stress on the family. The worst of the end of the spectrum is the individual could have a heart attack and die. He wouldn't be any good to anyone if he, he dies. A mason who is minimally affected will still not perform in all of the bodies as well as he would if it was one or two bodies. And this is where I see the burnout taking place. 
individuals who will take a job and they'll take another job and they'll take another job and eventually they become tired. Eventually they stress becomes a factor. Many aspects affect them that they didn't plan for and what they were doing if they were doing it from simply a desire to help. Their desire to help is resulting in their performing less and not providing as much help as they would if they had toned things back a bit. Now what I have been speaking of is a situation where someone sincerely believes that they need to help others and they're doing so out of the goodness of their heart and their a belief that they need to help whoever needs help and the problems that can come and burnout that can come from that. But I've realized that there's another situation that exists that can account for the same situation and it's not nearly as a noble a situation. Um, no matter what we want to believe, there are always individuals around who join masonry without the best intentions. And there are individuals who join masonry and achieve a little bit of position or a lot of position. It depends on the individual. And they become akin to a power broker. They seek power and glory. And once they achieve it, they dole out power, authority, rank, and so forth to those who are coming up and a situation is created where they may say something along the lines of if you want to be somebody you will do what I ask you to do and you will make me happy not do good work and help others but make me happy and this is a telltale sign of somebody that you really want to avoid and you don't want to be around when you see a situation like this. And what this leads to is in the Scottish Rite Craft Degrees, I've mentioned this in another video early on, um, the three bad guys are represented by three human failings, which is ignorance, falsehood, and ambition. And this situation that I'm describing plays towards the worst of the, the lot, and that is ambition. Uh, those who seek power, glory, uh, they're controlled by ambition and a desire to get something. They will work and work and work and work for the goal of personal reward rather than the goal of helping someone. Uh, these people help no one, including themselves. Uh, they end up at the end wholly unsatisfied because they will never achieve the reward that they think that they are trying to achieve or that they deserve. Um, in the end, individuals who are always around and are everywhere and their goal is ambition and achieving something, these individuals will also eventually fade away because usually when they get what they want, they're gone. Their goal has been achieved and they will move on to another goal, so they will also disappear. These individuals, when you see ones like this, stay away from them. Uh, they are not practicing the same type of masonry that you want to practice. They are practicing something that is to totally self-serving and not self-serving in the direction of improvement, but self-serving in the direction of attaining power and glory, which we don't need and we can avoid. In the end, what we do, we have to decide for ourselves. We have to decide what we want out of masonry, what our goal is, and what we are willing to do for it. Burning yourself out to show your love for masonry is not going to make you a better mason and is not going to truly help all of those. It is better that you spend your time 
training in say one or two lodges where you can train others to do as you are doing and let them spread out and spread education and training that way rather than one individual going around burning himself out the result will be a much longer lasting uh, effect and the results will be easier on everyone and the individual who is doing the teaching or the leading or whatever is going to do a better job if he has balance in what he's doing and he is not burning himself out by extending himself too thin. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the comments. If you like these videos or find them of any value, please uh, like them, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to talking with you next time.